The symptoms of coronavirus are really similar to influenza, and so if you've ever had the flu, you might be familiar with them. Most people start with a scratchy throat or a runny nose, but that doesn't last too long. Then they end up with a bad cough, that sort of real chest congestion, high fevers, and feeling pretty awful. Now, some people don't get that sick. Some people have a runny nose, and then they have this really weird symptom called anosmia. And this is the one that's been causing all sorts of crazy things on the internet. It's the lack of the ability to smell. If you've ever tried to taste food without actually smelling it, you'll learn that a lot of your taste comes from smell. Some patients are presenting with abdominal pain and diarrhea. Some people have pretty significant vomiting. Some patients early on have mostly abdominal pain and just not feeling well with the fever and then don't develop the cough until later. Once you get symptoms, those in 80% of people will last for about seven days. At the end of a week, most people are starting to feel better and doing well. Unfortunately, about 20% of people go on to actually get worse at the end of that week and end up in a hospital. Of those, another 8% will need to be in the intensive care unit. And of those, about 2% total will end up succumbing to the illness. Among those who have symptoms, there's a wide range of you know how to say presentations of the illness as well as the severity you can have people who have actually very mild symptoms that last you know a couple of days you know two or three days and then you have other people who can get really quite sick and they can be in you know go to the intensive care unit and, and have illness or be you know there for a month or more I wish I knew more about how long people were actually contagious. We know a lot about the fact that they can be contagious a few days before they even show symptoms, and some people never really have much in the way of symptoms, but can definitely pass on the virus. What we don't know is really how long they remain contagious. We're pretty sure that it's safe for you to be around other people when you don't have any symptoms for three full days. That's the rule of thumb that we use with our healthcare workers and with our patients as long as a week has passed from when you first started to feel sick and three full days of feeling completely well, that's no more cough, no more fever, doing fine for at least three days, even if that's longer than a week, then you're probably good. What we don't know is you know, how, how infectious they are exactly. We know they're infectious before they develop symptoms, but how much, how infectious they are and how many days before that is unclear. In patients who get severe disease that go to the hospital, um, we know that they can shed virus, or viral RNA. You know, you can detect, you know, that those nucleic acids of the virus up to 20 days and longer, you know, up to 20, 21 days. But the question is, is for those severe ones, are they shedding live virus infections? We don't know that as of, as of yet. There are certain specific risk factors that are associated with getting ill, you know, ill enough to go to the hospital. The elderly, um, it's, we have very rare cases of children or infants or young adults who go, you know, need to go to the hospital. Almost the majority of people over 60 years of age and uh, 60, 70, 80 years of age. People with underlying um, conditions such as cardiovascular disease, uh, lung disease, like chronic, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This is a disease that happens when people smoke, um, you know, for many years. Uh, people with underlying malignancies, so people who are conceivably immunocompromised, as well as, um, yeah, in, in, as well as diabetes, you know, people with underlying diabetes. What we know so far about this infection in children uh, first came out of a case series of just over 2,000 pediatric COVID-19 infections in China, uh, and more recently came out of a report of about 2,500 pediatric cases of COVID-19 here in the United States, is that uh, largely this infection is a relatively mild infection in uh, the majority of children. There are a few theories as to why this may be, but they're purely speculative at this point in time. Um, one of the theories would be that um, the more severe illness seems to largely be driven by a very robust inflammatory and immune response in the airways of patients infected with this virus. And it may be that children, for some reason, just aren't as primed for being driven into that hyperinflammatory response. 
and that may be protective against the more severe features and respiratory distress associated with this infection. It's still very important that children, like everybody else, are practicing appropriate social distancing measures uh, and appropriate hand hygiene uh, and really eliminating exposures uh, of themselves to other individuals in the community to whatever extent possible to really try and contribute to uh, flattening of the curve.